So uh, Alessandro Maria um, Sel Salvatella. Correct. Uh, from Padu. Sorry, I put your name. Uh, is going to uh, uh, talk about how machine learning and differential geometry can uh, tell how old your brain is. And uh, yeah, Alessandro, the stage is yours. So thanks a lot for, uh, for the nice introduction and uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. So uh, first I want to apologize because I'm a mathematician and not a neuroscientist. So forgive me if I say something which is nonsense from the neuroscience point of view, please correct me. So this is actually a work that was done mainly by uh, some students of mine during a class project. So Justin, Koatan, Peter, Maxwell, and Jukoin, and they published it in a Purdue uh, undergrad research uh, journal. So, uh, so the question is to try to understand uh, uh, if the brain can tell us how old we are. Okay. So, and uh, we are trying to use a combination of machine learning and uh, geometric tools. So, of course, there is the importance. Uh, uh, of the question given by the fact that the population is aging, there is an increase of uh, neuro neurodegenerative disease, burden into healthcare, and so on. So, um, so there is the Human Connect project, which is uh, a uh, publicly funded study uh, aiming at mapping the neural pathways of the brain, which had this very nice data set that uh, my student worked on and uh, included uh, um, 1,207 subjects with brain measurement and, and uh, corresponding age, age range. Uh, among those, there were, uh, uh, we analyzed only 1,113. And uh, uh, so the variables included were uh, 56 volumes, uh, 68 surface areas, uh, 68 thicknesses, and they were divided only into four age groups, which were somehow uh, young adults. Okay. So what is differential geometry? Well, this is a study of uh, uh, smooth objects which are invariant by smooth transformation. One of the most famous uh, uh, problems in uh, differential geometry was the Poincare conjecture, which was solved by Perelman in 2003. And uh, this is a guy which won a Fields medal, won $1 million, and rejected both of the, declined both of the, both of the prizes. Um, so another very famous problem is the uh, isoperimetric problem which uh, is just one, just trying to understand the relationship between the area and the perimeter of uh, shapes, okay? And there are instances of these in uh, different uh, different dimensions. Uh, one important thing is the isoperimetric inequality, which states that uh, the sphere has the smallest uh, uh, surface area per given volume once you scale according to the dimension. And uh, one example to understand uh, uh, that there is no upper limit is uh, to just think about a rectangle with fixed area one, and uh, uh, sites which uh, um, enlarge and decrease each other. So I don't know how to explain that. Um, and so th the thing is that one can use this type of ratio as a proxy of how spe spherical a surface is. Okay. So there are other measure of geographic folding. Right. So the LGI, for example. Um, in the data set, there were not uh, full information about this. Uh, and so we only uh, add thickness and surface area. So we use uh, some sort of uh, uh, surrogate of the isoperimetric ratio to try to understand if there is a difference between age groups. So we found these uh, possibly not super exciting results, namely that uh, uh, we were able to uh, classify around 40% uh, um, in a four-way classification problem using, uh, using the data available. But the interesting thing is that uh, um, using simply this uh, sort of uh, surrogate of the isoperimetric ratio, we were not losing uh, uh, prediction accuracy, but we were somehow having some more uh, uh, explanation on the um, uh, feature engineered uh, in, in, in the process. So some comments. So we test accuracy using validation set approach. We did a uh, meaningful dimensionality reduction of 64.5% of, uh, of the variables without uh, losing uh, classification accuracy. And uh, I want to mention that dimensionality reduction is not completely trivial because uh, rational functions like that don't, don't exactly fall down in the general uh, theory of approxima universal approximation of uh, feed forward neural networks. Some conclusions, so we applied, we attacked the branch problem using uh, uh, geometric and machine learning methods. We analyzed the data set of young adults and with, with brain biometrics. And uh, mm, we showed that uh, uh, direct beneficial engineering can uh, provide uh, uh, explainable dimensionality reduction without losing in test accuracy. And of course, the branch problem is still, uh, is a very fascinating, fascinating problem. Here are some activities uh, in my lab where uh, students and uh, researchers can uh, 
can uh, interact and have fun. And thank you for your attention. I hope I didn't say too many boring things. No, not at all. This is super exciting. Uh, these uh, interdisciplinary uh, approaches are always, you know, uh, very eye-opening for uh, a person like me. So um, you kind of uh, skimmed through it. So uh, as far as I know, the the um, what you also had on the slides that the the, the human connectome project were mainly uh, data from healthy young adults. Is that right? Like uh, 21 to 35 or something? Yeah. Um, how, how do you think your findings would extrapolate to, you know, either end to old age or younger age? Are there studies in the field that can give us a, a hint about it? So there are two somehow follow-up studies that uh, some some of us uh, are doing and one is uh, again the uh, time evolution of the brain biometrics so to check uh, what happens uh, through time and uh, the other thing is uh, uh, comparing uh, healthy healthy controls and uh, um, uh, people affected by mental disorders for example uh, what we have in mind is schizophrenia but could be other things and using also different type of uh, uh, modalities. For example, instead of uh, structural uh, SMRI using fMRI or DTI, for example, I think that it is known that uh, there are fractional isotropies that uh, have some sort of uh, uh, parabolic, uh, um, parabolic uh, uh, trajectory through age or something like that. Um, but of course, this is very, very interesting. And uh, there are some mathematical uh, difficulties in uh, dealing with uh, um, dealing with uh, uh, the complete structure of the, for example, the diffusion tensor, which uh, can be overcome by using, for example, other tools from differential geometry. What I have in mind is called, uh, in technical terms, fiber bundle, whatever it means. It's just something that uh, you have some sort of matrix at each point, like the diffusion tensor, and this matrix varies in a smooth way uh, along, uh, for example, the, the, the tracts. Uh, um, one matter tracks and that type of thing, right? So you have to use this type of tools to, to take full advantage of, uh, of uh, the, um, uh, the, the structure of the diffusion tensor, for example. Yeah, it's kind of amazing to see, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy for me at least to, to have a, like a, a very intuitive feeling about how, you know, I, I know you came up with uh, all these uh, uh, differential geometric uh, uh, measures and uh, it's very hard for me to connect it to any uh, functionality uh, explanation or mechanistic uh, explanation. Do you have any guesses, like so, simulations at all? Well, uh, it, it's a very broad question. Um, what, uh, what I think, uh, one thing that we notice here is uh, um, try to find uh, um, uh, multiple measures of gelification. So there is the local gelification index, which is of course is a local measure. There are uh, more global measures, uh, and there are uh, um, which come again from uh, these uh, mathematical tools. So um, and, and there are things which are a little bit in the middle, and uh, so it's hard to to say which one is the is the correct tool. And probably the usual answer is uh, it depends. And uh, of course, I think that uh, uh, there are tools which are available for two mathematicians which are somehow unknown but relatively um, usable by neuroscientists. And so I think it's, a, it's important to somehow communicate because, uh, because in that way one can uh, somehow, the mathematician can learn uh, what are the questions that uh, people in neuroscience want to answer and neuroscientists maybe can, uh, can, can uh, have access to, to tools which uh, they didn't know that maybe existed, but they actually are uh, known from uh, by us, let's say. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So I know that uh, these data, these uh, connect home data are hard to get and we just have so much on humans. Um, but I know that there are uh, a bunch of studies um, that studied the connect uh, connectomes for um, marmosets, for example, other species. Um, have you thought about uh, applying your methods there? Uh... So um, moving forward, there are a lot of options. That's actually um, something very interesting. 
And uh, as you mentioned, right, in this data set, we didn't even have the exact ages. So we had some sort of uh, uh, age groups. And uh, of course, that uh, somehow is a limitation because uh, um, those thresholds are uh, maybe they're meaningful, but uh, they can cause a uh, lot of errors somehow, right? Because in the classification accuracy. Of course, one can weight the classification accuracy based on uh, um, if, you, if you miss uh, the age by a lot or not, but still that's a complication. Uh, we haven't uh, tried on uh, um, anything from on, on, on species different from humans. So that we haven't done yet. But of course that is important because then it also, uh, if done um, uh, in a certain way can, um, can be related to evolution and uh, other important questions. So, um, so um, of course, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I, I don't even know what kind of questions can be, can, can be asked and answered by, uh, across species, but right. But uh, um, yeah, it, it's uh, just fascinating to see these uh, uh, methods, math ma mathematical methods can, you know, somehow relate to uh, uh, how our brain develops. It's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, I agree. All right, so...